to start, um, I want to hear your reaction to, you know, Councilman and Councilwoman Deb Gross and Anthony Coghill's new policy, new proposal to uh, for city sanctioned homeless encampments. What do you think about that? I know both of those council members and they're good people. And I know that they're well intentioned, uh, but I think that their proposal, ha having not having any cons consultation with the mayor's office, having not had any consultation with the county, you know, and, the, and excuse me, the um, human services department, I think is a little bit misguided and a little bit putting the cart in front of the horse. Okay, you do, you, do you think it'll work? Uh, no, no, because it's gonna run into many of the same obstacles all of the other things that we try to do here that would benefit the people of Allegheny County or the city of Pittsburgh run into, and that's, you know, bureaucratic roadblocks like zoning and planning. You know, for them to be able to find a place, they have to identify some place where it would be allowable, you know, from a zoning perspective, right? Sure. Secondly, you look at the number of folks that they claim that are homeless, and then if you look at their proposal, what did they say? It would only hold 25 people, 25 to 50 or 25 something like that? 25 to 50, Okay. Yeah. Well, then how many of those are you going to need? Then you look at the NIMBY people. NIMBY, N-I-M-B-Y stands for not in my backyard. You're going to be challenged with people who are going to say, I don't want those in those in my neighborhoods. Okay. And so they're, while well-intentioned, as I said, I know those folks, they're both good people. Okay. Um, I think we're missing the boat here and not looking at the bigger picture. This camp that I just filmed is still, you know, it, it definitely falls under this criteria for uncontained trash, uh, needles, uh, human waste, things like that. You know, what do you think about the city not enforcing this policy? You know, what's your opinion of that? Well, that's one of the reasons why we have these problems, okay? I think if, if we were to look at this, we need to look at homelessness from a 30,000 foot level, okay? Take a look at the bigger picture. And most folks would look at those folks and see them homeless and say, oh my gosh, oh, that, that's terrible. I feel sorry for these people, right? Uh, and that's because many people have the impression that you're homeless because of poverty, you know? Uh, and they say, oh, there but for the grace of God go I. But the reality is I think that we're missing talking about the underlying issue, which has made these folks homeless. 75% of all these people that you see on the street or suffering from either mental illness, substance abuse, or both, okay? Uh, and we're not providing them any help. Right. By taking and just allowing them to continue going about the way they are today. And, and I say that with confidence because if you look at the videos that you filmed, as well as every other video that we see showing homeless sites and locations across this county, it's littered with needles. Right. Okay? <clears throat> so. You have some challenges. So if it were me, if I were the king for the day and I was tasked with solving this problem, I'd put together a task force of stakeholders, people that were involved, and I would go and I would scour the country looking at places where they've tried different solutions, whether they be housing first, bridge shelters, you know, or, you know, or community living to try to get these people the help they need to get them back on their feet so that they can live better lives. What do I think about the city not enforcing it? That's why we have such a problem here. A number of years ago, it was estimated that our homeless population was, you know, 250, 300, 350 people. And it was so stable that the police often knew who these people were by name and would often give them rides to shelters and things like that. Uh, it was under the former mayor, Mayor Peduto, where things really started to get out of control. And he created, he created this problem that has exceeded or lasted past his administration and is now in the current administration. And he did so because homeless people have a choice. They have a choice of where they're gonna go. And where they go is to where the, the environments are the most permissive. When he determined that Allegheny County and the city of Pittsburgh was gonna be a welcoming city, okay? And then they had a de facto legalization of street camping, you know, drug use, drug consumption, okay, and uh, lack of prosecution of property crimes. He created an environment that made it attractive to these folks. So many of the people that are here today, part of our homeless population, aren't originally from here. We had a guy broke into the Pennsylvania, the hotel down, excuse me, the 
the, the Pennsylvania, the hotel downtown, and climbed to the top and leapt to his death, you know, onto the East Busway. He was from California, or had a California address, had family in New York, wasn't from here. We had a homeless man choke out a groom that was on his honeymoon in one of the downtown hotels in the lobby. Choked him out from behind, took him to the fort, beat his head off the fort. This man will never be the same. That guy was from New Jersey. A lot of these problems that we have, they're not homegrown. They're not from here, okay? And the reason why these people are here is because our environment is permissive. So first thing we need to do is we need to look elsewhere at what have other uh, jurisdictions, what have other cities, counties, states done about the homeless situation and what has worked. And when I say worked, I'm looking for positive outcomes. I'm not talking about, well, we moved somebody into a hotel room, so th that's what the answer is. Well, no, all you did was you took somebody with mental, suffering from mental illness, you took somebody you know, suffering with uh, drugs or substance abuse, and you took and you put, just put them in a hotel room. You didn't fix the underlying problem. You didn't make their life any better, right? right. <clears throat> so you wanna look at where have we had the greatest impact. And there are stories across this country that can be told. You can look to New York where they have a program which takes and gets people off the street, trains them in how to, give, how to do work, puts, gives them jobs and things like that, provides them the help from a mental illness perspective and from a uh, substance abuse perspective to try to make them productive members of society again. You can look to Houston, where a mayor down there between 2012 and I think 2019 took and reduced the homelessness population by 54%. You can look to San Diego, okay, where they took and reduced the homeless population through the use of bridge shelters. In Houston, what he did was he made sure that they had sufficient bed capacity, shelter capacity for the homeless, but they enforced the laws. They banned street camping. You know, they enforced the ordinances. You know, they prosecuted property crimes and things like this. And when I bring up property crime, it's because so many of the folks that are suffering, you know, from uh, drug, you know, uh, drug addiction, okay, <laughs> they commit property crimes to be able to feed that addiction. So that, that, that's, a, that, that's a real challenge, but that's, that's really what you need to do, you know, and look at this. So it's not about putting a Band-Aid on something by saying, hey, you know what, we'll just put a tent, we'll put a bunch of tents over here in this plot right. where a municipality absolutely doesn't want them, okay? We need to try to do a little bit better. Let's take and care for the people that are from here that need our help. I mean, we spend over a billion dollars a year in Allegheny County's Human Services Department. Let's direct these people to get help, whether it be for substance abuse, whether it be for mental illness, okay? Um, if folks refuse that help, then I believe our obligation to them ends there, you know, because I don't believe that the taxpayers of the county or the state or the country or, uh, should be on the hook to pay, you know, for somebody to just continue in a lifestyle Right. You know, which is we see is, is, is by the living conditions, which you've exposed in some of your videos, is absolutely overboard. So someone that doesn't want help, that has resources to get help, the obligation ends there. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I mean, look, I mean, I, we need to enforce them. We need to enforce the ordinances. Those encampments need to be cleaned up. You know, those people, if they commit crimes, need to be prosecuted. Again, I'm not looking to throw people in jail, but I'm not looking to allow our community to continue to decline and the quality of life for the folks here because some folks, you know, choose not to participate in society. Our obligation is to provide shelter. Right. We need to provide a safety net. I absolutely believe that, okay? But um, the, it has to come with rules. You, you have to have compassion, but it has to be with accountability. Sure. Okay, and folks who just say, listen, I just want to give them a place to stay where they can continue to do drugs or do whatever else they're doing, and you know, the whole bit, um, that's the answer. No, it's not, because you're not really helping right. those people. But a lot of these outreach groups do, as I'm sure you're familiar, harm reduction, where they provide clean needles, tourniquets, um, you know, even I've heard is even so much as crack pipes. Um, cookers for, for dope, things like that. Yeah. What's your reaction to that? What's your opinion on harm reduction? That's a, that's a huge problem as well, okay? Uh, the thought process behind it is that, well, these people are gonna do drugs anyway, we wanna make sure that they're safe. But the problem is, you're try, when you have these programs to try to wean people off of drugs, 
to have them walk by every day, tables and things laid out with needles and foil and pipes and everything else. You know, it's just, it makes it very difficult for them, you know, to right. be able to take and break that habit and get off of that. And I've heard that from addicts, you know, people that are trying to get to recovery. We need to really look at what's been tried elsewhere. You know, I'm looking for best practices, okay? What's been tried elsewhere and what has delivered positive outcomes, not just at the, for the moment, but for a longer term, right. okay, to find out what's worked. And, uh, you know, I think when you do that, you'll find that a lot of these things like the housing first, uh, the harm reduction, doesn't really work. 2019, I think it was in, excuse me, 2018 in San Francisco, we wanted to 2019, you know, it was like 50%, the, the number of deaths from overdose went up 50% from the homeless population in San Francisco from drug abuse or drug, you know, overdoses in 2019 from 2018. In 2020, during the pandemic, San Francisco put these folks in hotels and then they were delivering alcohol and drugs to these folks, you know, because everyone was in, you know, quarantine, so to speak. So, yeah, deaths more than doubled. Okay, so we weren't really helping these people. We weren't solving the problem. You know, we were actually enabling and exacerbating. So that's why I say, look, um, none of us have all the answers. You know, elected officials, as you mentioned, uh, my two friends, you know, on Pittsburgh City Council, you know, Councilman Cogville and Councilwoman Gross have the best intentions, but none of us have all the answers. And we need to find, we need to be able to get the resources to be able to take the time to go out and learn from what's been tried, because I don't hear anybody here in this area talking about these things that I'm able to find, you know, quickly. We had a hearing at Allegheny County Council back in June, and this is when we were talking about closing the Smithville Street shelter downtown on Smithville Street. At the conclusion of that meeting, because I brought up things like the success that Houston had had in reducing homelessness, homelessness there by 54% over an eight year period. Uh, the council president, Pat Katina, said, you know, oh, we're gonna reconvene this meeting to talk and investigate what Councilman DeMarco talked about, what Houston is doing a little bit. We've never had a meeting. Here we are almost six months later, and I've never heard another thing about it. So that fell on deaf ears. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it was. It was something to say while well, he could castigate the administration for what they were trying to do. Right. Okay. But there's never been anything else. And that's not the first time. Allegheny County Council is a part time body. So, you know, we, we're not, we have other jobs or things like that. Uh, we're not full time. We don't have a staff to be able to do all this research. And that's why I say it needs to be, uh, you know, for maybe for the county executives level to put together a group and provide for the resources to be able to travel and see firsthand. Sure. You know, some of these things, what has worked and what hasn't, and not be afraid to ask the hard questions. Again, right. uh, I'm talking about delivering positive outcomes. When I say positive outcomes, I talk about, look at our nonprofit space. You know, we probably have about 500 nonprofits right here in Western Pennsylvania. And some folks would say there's a little bit of overcapacity in some of these spaces. But some folks, if they get somebody to stop using drugs for eight days, they'll consider that a positive outcome, right? Where I don't consider that a positive outcome. How about we've gotten them to stop for at least six months, right? You know, and they're on the path to recovery and becoming a useful and productive citizen again. One of the big problems that we have here is because the city of Pittsburgh and Allegheny County, for all intents and purposes, are a one party town, you don't get the injection of these different ideas, you know, into the discourse or into the public government because these folks just tend to do as they please because you know they know that because of the voter registration advantage that they have that they're likely going to be there you know until they decide to move on or so, until they're term limited look when i uh, first got involved in politics a number of years ago someone told me that people get involved for one of two reasons one they want to do something or accomplish something that's an issue that's important to them or two they want to be somebody and unfortunately i think we have too many people that ran for office for the wrong reason, which was B. And, you know, I'm focused on trying to find a solution to the problems we face, you know, whether it be, you know, for jobs, for taxes, for homelessness, for crime, public right. safety. There are others that it's just, 
They just like talking about the issue. Right. Okay, because the issue is something that they can rail against, you know, when they're out there on the political stump. But then when given the opportunity to be in a position to try to fix it, choose to do nothing or focus on something else. Okay, and so, you know, I stand here ready, willing and able to help anyone, whether it be the city, whether it be the county, whether it be the next county executive or whatever, you work on issues like this to try to find solutions to the problems and not just take and continue to allow a issue to perpetuate and continue into perpetuity here sure. until the next administration is faced with the same thing or this grows out of control, sure. which it already is. I mean, well, you and I are sitting down because you called and asked, right. okay? Um, you know, the, the other media, no one asks. Right. You know, our opinion, even though I'm the only Republican elected countywide, you know, here in Allegheny County. Uh, but they don't ask, what do I believe or what do I think, you know, should be done, okay? <laughs> um, so this is an attempt to inject some of those ideas sure. into the public discourse, right? To have folks start talking about them, start looking at them and realize, hey, wait a minute. You know, maybe there are more answers here right. than just, you know, trying to say, okay, let Let's just take and put these people in a tent or a hotel or, you know, a, a, what they term lack of affordable housing. And that's a whole other issue here because the reason we lack affordable housing is because of supply and demand and the terrible zoning restrictions that the city of Pittsburgh places on developers, like inclusionary zoning, where they demand that anybody building needs to set aside 10% of their units for. Uh, <clears throat> for uh, low, low cost housing, okay? The problem is they also put other restrictions on like the height of any type of structure. Well, that prevents the developers from being able to include enough units to make it cost effective right. to be able to provide that 10%. But we need to think outside the box. Instead of having that type of um, restriction placed upon them, <clears throat> what if we just you know talk to them about, hey, uh, we already are talking here locally about going to nonprofits and asking them for payments in lieu of taxes. There's some sort of way they can help pay the city and the county for the services that they are able to realize. Okay, um, but asking the developers, you know, would they be able to contribute? Would they be willing to contribute to a fund that we were able to use that fund working together with our trade unions to you know, possibly provide internships for folks to learn skills in plumbing? In elect, uh, electricians, uh, carpenters, and things like that, and repair and rehab some of the dilapidated or vacant homes we have here existing today in this area as a means to increase the uh, the available stock of housing and hopefully be able to bring down and provide affordable housing for some of the folks who, who need it, right? There's a lot of ideas out there, but I don't hear these people talking about them because they're too busy once they get elected trying to run for the next office. You know, and that's extremely disappointing. I really appreciate the fact that you're willing to talk about it. And I, you know, you're one of the few elected officials I've been able to speak with already, um, but you're not afraid to tell people what you think about this issue and, and put your ideas out there. So I really appreciate it, Sam. No, this is my pleasure, Bob. Thank you very much for giving us the opportunity. Uh, good luck and keep doing what you're doing because you're exposing and you're shedding light on things that the regular media isn't picking up. It's important that the people see what's really happening out there, you know, so that they know and uh, aren't just sold this, oh, everything's great. Right. You know, so, right. Okay. Hey, sunlight's the best disinfectant. A absolutely. Hey, so. thank you very much for your time. Thanks, Sam.